Imagine you get home after a long day at work and prop your feet up on your lazy boy. Your feet and legs are aching intensely. They always hurt these days. You finally reach down to pull your socks off and are caught completely by surprise when your toe comes off with your sock. Unlikely, you might think, but this is the reality for more people than you'd imagine. With approximately 800,000 Canadians and 9 million Americans currently suffering from peripheral artery disease. Peripheral artery disease is thought to arise from the narrowing of the large blood vessels, which restricts the blood flow and prevents oxygen and nutrients from reaching the tissue. The symptoms can vary from a mild discomfort all the way to a complete lack in blood flow, which results in extreme pain, infection, and necrosis, otherwise known as tissue death. Often, these patients require amputation. This can range from a partial foot amputation all the way to a whole leg amputation. Currently, these patients have limited treatment options, some of which involve the widening of these vessels to bypass these blockages and restore the blood flow to the tissue. Although this seems like a logical treatment option, it's often not met with success and is rarely a solution for these patients. This is where my research will help. I'm hypothesizing that the microscopic vessels which deliver the oxygen and nutrients to the tissue are flawed, giving reason for the lack of success of the procedures that restore the blood flow to the tissue. Let me explain this another way. What if I told you that your grass was dying? Presumably, your sprinkler system isn't working. If the pipes have been cleared and the spout is turned on, then what could be the problem? What if I told you that the sprinkler heads, the method of water delivery, was defective? I use muscle donated from patients following lower leg amputation because of peripheral artery disease to evaluate the microscopic vessels in the dying muscle. With fluorescence microscopic techniques, I create three-dimensional projection images of these vessels and networks to evaluate their structure and organization. My goal is to characterize these vessels and determine why they aren't feeding the tissue effectively. Thus far, I've found several abnormalities, some of which include an unusual disorganized pattern, as well as small blockages and an unusual structure, all of which would contribute to an inability to feed the tissue effectively. We can't understand what we can't see, and we can't fix what we can't understand. Looking at these small vessels and determining why they aren't feeding the tissue effectively are the beginning steps to determining a therapy which could rectify these problems and normalize this otherwise hidden end of the vascular tree. Thank you.